We are practically drowning in data, forecasts, dashboards, indexes, not to mention KPIs in our bulging spam folders, because let's face it, emails, texts, and emojis are all forms of data. We are trying to store it, secure it, and make sense of it to help us manage our supply chains and support our organizations. How are we doing in all those efforts? Well, one way to find out is to, you guessed it, gather more data. Welcome to Global Sourcing Insights from SIPS. Gathering data about data is what our guests have been doing for several years now, so we invited them here to tell us some of what they know and what they hope to find out in their next round of research. First is Dr. Rob Hanfield. He is the Bank of America University Distinguished Professor of Supply Chain Management at North Carolina State University and the Executive Director of the Supply Chain Resource Cooperative. Mr. And Rob, why don't you say hello? Thanks. It's a, a pleasure to be here with you today. And uh, we're really excited about this uh, uh, big survey on data that we're doing. And uh, really, really a pleasure. Thanks. Excellent. And also with us is Joseph Yakura, the founder of the International Association for Data Quality, Governance, and Analytics, and a former executive at IBM, American Express, and several other global companies. Welcome, Joseph. Thank you very much. Looking forward to our session today, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak to the members of SIPS. Great. And of course, also joining us is Bill Michaels, Vice President of SIPS Americas. Bill, say hello. Hi, Bob. Looking forward to hearing a little bit about collecting uh, data and data analytics because it's yep. an area where most of the clients are interested. Yep. So Rob and Joe, every year you and your colleagues collect survey data about how our organizations use, maintain, and protect their data. Question to Rob here. Based on the prior sub surveys, what two things have you found that are most concerning or perhaps surprising in the responses that you've seen? Well, you know, um, Robert, what, what we see is that, uh, you know, companies are always talking about AI, they're talking about machine-based learning, they're talking about higher analytics, but, you know, based on, on our survey results, the quality of their data is not that good. Um, it's improving, but it's improving relatively slowly. And uh, most organizations don't really have a formal data governance uh, effort. We think that's really important. The second thing I think that is really surprising is, you know, the number one tool used by supply chain managers and procurement managers is Microsoft Excel still. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and people are still, you know, communicating data by uh, exchanging Excel files via email for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it's surprising to me that we're still stuck in the Excel era, uh, you know, despite all the, all the hype that we hear about big data and analytics and everything else. Yep. So, Joe, do you agree? And if so, what other priority issues would you add to uh, Rob's list or surprises or concerns? Yeah, no, I obviously agree with Rob. Our findings are relatively the same as other consulting firms' findings that, you know, the, the emphasis is on more and more use of data. People have data, but what we're finding out is like just the simple things of data literacy. Uh, people don't understand how to interpret, use, speak in terms of data. Uh, governance is absolutely critical because our study, now again, we're going into this will be hopefully our fifth uh, annual study. We are seeing trends over time um, that the supply chain functions in companies are being added to uh, governance committees in corporations, which is great. So supply chain has a presence at the table. Um, one of the surprising things though that we've seen over time is somewhat of a trend that corporations in, in the survey executives continue to emphasize the importance of data and the use of data, yet our data shows that there's a slight trending downward or staying flat in the dollars expended to educate their staffs on using data. So it's kind of an interesting uh, situation, but in virtue of our survey, we can't get behind that other than say that there's a trend there that we're questioning why that is happening given the importance of data. Hmm. So from the trends over the last few surveys, do you see any progress towards better stewardship or better uses of the data that supply managers are generating? Is, is there any hope? Yeah, no, I, I, if I can answer that and then uh, ask Rob to have his view too, obviously, but um, we are seeing progress. 
the, we're not saying that it's gloom and doom. There are incremental progress that at least our studies over the last four years, and now hopefully this fifth one will give us newer insights. Uh, but the progress is very slow, it's incremental, and it's not necessarily consistent. And like Rob said, most corporations still use their data cleaning and organizing tool is still Excel, uh, which is okay. We did see a, a migration in last year's study of people going towards using more visualization tools, uh, which is great because you know now that you try to assimilate or convey an idea or identify something in a massive amounts of rows and columns, it's impossible. So the visualization has helped in interpreting the data. The question is, is are the staffs at the maturity level to do something with those findings? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Bill Michaels, I'd like to bring you into the conversation here. Uh, what, what is your reaction? What are you thinking of what you've heard so far? What I'm thinking is when I think about data, I think about uh, other areas in organizations like marketing and sales where they follow you through companies. And if I say something, it shows up on my Facebook ac account. And then I look at the supply chain and I look at companies that have merged with 25 or 30 different systems and still haven't been able to get that together. And, and I wonder what, what it will take. And also, I wonder what the future is for like data science and scientists as, as we look at supply chain in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got a lot of uh, we've got a lot of work to do. So this whole idea of clean data is really one we, we kind of expect that when we're collecting data, that uh, the expectation is well, it's great data, and we just have to use it. But there's there's really uh, a big step in there. People don't have it's garbage in, garbage out. Uh, if people don't have the, the right data or the data really isn't reliable. So are you running across that? And what, how big a problem do you think that is? Joe, why don't you jump in on that? And then Rob, you can uh, add your. Sure, it, it, it's a major problem. Um, most studies, including ours, find that uh, data analysts spend 60 to 80% of their time just trying to clean and organize the data before they can actually interpret it. So there's a huge, huge front end workload that makes the data analyst uh, less productive than he or she should be. The other challenge is, is we're getting so much data and they use the term black data. And what that means is the term that it's, it, it's referring to is that 90 to 95% of all the data that gets collected may get used once or never. So on one side, we're accumulating massive amounts of data because it's easy to accumulate now, easy to store, et cetera, and easy and cost-effective to transfer. But at the same time, we're overwhelmed with the ability to interpret that data. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would add to that. You know, I think um, in terms of data governance, we're, we're seeing a few organizations and we've developed, you know, some case studies in our first uh, or our last report and, and uh, we're continuing to do that. Some organizations are building what they call a, a data lake. And what that is, is they're saying, you know, they're, they're segregating their data. They're pulling in just the data they need on a project by project basis, a segregating it, cleansing it, and using it for KPIs, for control towers, for dashboards, as opposed to you know, throwing all of the data into, you know, a big database, which, you know, we, you know, jokingly call a data swamp. You know, and and uh, so so really trying to keep that lake clean with just the right kind of data that you require, and then updating and pulling it, and and you know APIs are are really able to pull that data from multiple systems, so you don't have to, you know, you're working with data from legacy systems, but you're pulling it in, and cleansing it into a format where you can then begin to trust that data. Excellent. Yeah, I think I think one one other point I'd just like to make on that, if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to follow up on, on Rob's comments is the fact that a lot of the data that we hope will be useful is what we call unstructured data. And as okay. you started this session, you talked about a data that's in that's in um, emails, it's in, in spreadsheets, that's uh, in videos. Uh, all this is information that now is digitized and uh, accessible, the question is, is how do you mine through these unstructured data uh, and glean some intelligence and some information that's useful to advance your organization? Yep. Well, Joe, I always find it interesting uh, with the battle of the spreadsheets, whose spreadsheet is right. And so, you know, you have uh, 10 spreadsheets for the same item and none of them agree. So it's always a, ba a balance and challenge for the companies. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So whose data do you trust, you know? Yeah. Well, that, that goes back to the point that Rob made earlier that, you know, this whole thing is governance. It's all about trust. And our studies and other studies show that most executives have access to some reasonable data, but often default to a gut interpretation. And so it's being used in some cases as an aid to the decision. In some cases, it's just a reference to a decision. And I think we're all trying to move to what's commonly termed used as data-driven decision-making, where the decision will be based really on hard facts. The problem is, is without good governance, people don't trust the source of the data. And you can't just a chicken and egg thing about data literacy, people know how to use it. But even if they know how to use it, if you don't have trust in the data, it, it's almost like, so what? Yeah. Yeah, we can certainly look at that in the public health arena and uh, when we're talking about data about vaccines. So there is the huge, uh, th there's an example that's playing out on the national, the world stage right now. Uh, you know, whose data do you trust and do you trust the information, the, the science behind vaccines? So uh, it's not surprising that we would have the same kind of conflicts or questions coming up within an organization. So one of the things I'm excited about, I'm sure Rob is too, is, is that this year's survey, given the emphasis on supply chain over the last year, are we going to see a more significant movement in the supply chain profession on, on addressing data? Or is it going to be continuing a slow incremental evolution? Um, be interesting to see, given you know the the dramatically increased focus on all aspects of the supply chain. Yes. Uh, well, I is that one that's uh, a big thing that you are hoping to see from this round. Uh, so, how are you going to investigate that? Are you asking different questions, or how are you going about it? Okay, we're, we're asking a few more questions and, and, you know, in particular, you know, we're also looking at uh, sort of organizational readiness. Um, you know, are you, are you ready to, to move towards this, uh, this new database uh, transformation? And, you know, particularly we find that there's really three kinds of people. There's, you know, you're, you've got, you know, young people, especially coming in are very good at, at moving around with social media and, you know, they're, they're very good at manipulating data sets uh, using Python, using R, using these advanced statistical tools, but they don't really understand a lot about the profession. They don't really know what procurement acquisition is about. Um, you have your subject matter experts, people who have been doing this for years and years, and, you know, they're steeped in procurement and they understand all of the details involved in it. And so there's a third group that you kind of need to make this happening. We call them the interpreters. And they can kind of work between the two groups and get them to work together, figure out how to frame the problem, figure out how to get the right data to look at that problem, how to manipulate the data, how to, how to test for relationships. And uh, that requires someone who has you know, a bit of knowledge in both areas who can kind of work between them. And having that, that level of readiness, I think, is, is really important. Excellent. Joe, anything to add to that? Uh I agree 100% with Rob's comments. It's it's the maturity level of the organization, and most C levels uh, understand the need to how to use data better. They understand all the buzzwords, but many cases don't understand what those buzzwords mean. And as a result, they've committed large amounts of dollars and human resources to a project, and then at the conclusion of the project, they're disappointed and lose faith uh, because it didn't meet their objective, and they had a misunderstanding of the availability and the quality of the data and also their team's ability to interpret that data. So again, we're looking forward, hopefully, to a large response to this year's survey, because uh, that's going to be critical for us to truly assess, which I'm thinking, and again, I have no, no real sound data to support this, I'm expecting a significant difference. Significant may mean only a, a degree or two. Uh, versus, you know, the almost a stable trend that we've seen the, in, in the last four years. Okay. Well, so the other thing, Joe, Joe, is when, when people start to do real category management, they have to make decisions based on, on facts, fact-based decisions, make fact-based uh, proposals to their management, talk about, uh, talk about those things in business uh, terms that people understand. And I think that that's kind of hopefully moved the dial a little bit as we start to educate people in terms of making yeah. fact-based decisions. 
Yeah, a lot, a lot of this is awareness up front. I mean, one of the questions we ask in our survey is, do you include your data requirements in your RFQs? Very interesting because we all want to use data after the contract is in place, whether it be a product or service you're buying. Uh, and the, our response, our survey was just in the low 40%. Uh, actually identify their data requirements. So the assumption is, is you do a great job of negotiating a due diligence and include all these metrics in your contract negotiations. But then when you go to actually administer against the contract, you know, you, you may want a different format of the data, different level of details, and your supplier may or may not be able to do that. So getting this whole data question up front when you're starting a relationship or continuing a relationship with a supplier through the contracting process is very critical. Yeah. So uh, this, the survey uh, is going into the field, uh, if not soon uh, already. Uh, so how can people participate? Well, we, we'd love to have everyone participate. Uh, as, as The larger the quantity of responses, the more accurate, of course, our analysis will be. Uh, we love, you know, SIPS as being an international organization, getting representation from other parts of the world where other priorities may exist or other restrictions may exist. Uh, education levels will, will obviously be different. So we highly encourage and would welcome the participation of any and every SIPS member. Uh, the survey is not that long, uh, but the value I think we're going to derive from it as a profession will be profound. Excellent. So there'll be a web, it'll be, a, it's a web survey. And so you'll have a, a link and we will show that and um, people can do the survey. Now, how long about does it, does it take? Uh, how long is it? We're, we're trying to design the survey so that it can be completed in, you know, 10 minutes or less. And, and we, you know, we recognize that, you know, people are kind of uh, surveyed out and, uh, you know, particularly during COVID people were, just throwing surveys at them all the time. So we, we want to make this easy for people to understand. We want it to be simple so that when you're looking at the question, you're not having to you know, think and spend a lot of time through it. It should be fairly straightforward. And, and uh, that's just you know, good survey design. And we're on our fifth year doing this. So I think we're, 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 we've learned a, a quite a bit about how to, how to design a good survey. Excellent. And We'll do a post-survey uh, report or webinar just so that people understand where they fit and how they worked and in terms of, you know, the, the SIPS uh, members and SIPS versus the rest of the people responding. Excellent. Joe, do you have anything to add? No, I, I, I just encourage all of your members to participate. We really appreciate that. And um, like uh, Rob has said, we've made, obviously this becomes public information. We'll do a, a special readout, whatever uh, SIPs uh, would benefit to, to your membership uh, uh, with the findings of the study. And we hope we hope the study, again, given it's the fifth year, we're, we're establishing kind of the benchmark. That's what Rob and I, when we started this four years ago. So let's draw a line in the sand. No one's consistently doing this kind of research. And, and, you know, as, as Bill mentioned earlier, there's many, many other professions in our organizations or companies that are using data way more advanced than we are in the supply chain profession. And we're, we're in a catch-up mode. So this is not, uh, in my opinion, this is something that's dramatically needed. You know, we're falling behind as a profession, yet we have the data and the tools to do it. So appreciate everyone's uh, involvement with the survey and we'd look we're going to look forward to doing the final readout of this of this this year's study excellent well thank you rob thank you joe and also uh thank you bill and so when you are when you folks are ready to report back we'll hear from you again i hope all right thank you i'm bob rossbeck have a great day